synesthesia, you know, all the senses you know, merging into one, you know, like a newborn child. And it's very simple to understand. Here we have the point, and it's at rest. And there we have the point moving, forming a line. There we have the eye, so the eye sees the movement. And the movement appears to be on a screen. That movement along here is the differential of its speed, and that's the integral of the surface or the behind the screen. Now that movement from rest to movement back to rest at some other position creates a wave. So on the recording in the whole thing as a synesthetic superpixel, on the next level you create a wave recording that particular shape of movement. And that wave then gives the impression of going from one space, one place to another, a point of rest, which gives the idea of space, the third dimension. And each space is identified by smell. So smell is a secondary sense. The primary sense is that this is a space. And obviously all spaces would merge into one. So the, each one is identified by smell and they get the development of the nose. The endurance of the wave, you know, standing wave, creates sound. That's what sound is. The endurance of the space creates time. That's what time is. So time is sound, which again creates the ear. Now, the wave form, space is like fluid. So that wave form is a pressure wave. So we get pressure. We get a variation in pressure and as we move through the fluid. You know, whatever the fluid is, as we move through it, it's variation in pressure. And that pressure gives us a sense of touch. Once you've got a membrane with pressure, you've got a sense of touch. Now the enduring pressure map we define as an object. It's an enduring pressure map. It, it stays there. And from the pressure we have the hand, and then from hand to mouth, you know, the, the object is placed in the mouth. And so taste is a secondary sense. We're just identifying a shape, of, well, a volume, really, a volume. Here we have our sensitivity to heat, which is about being male and female with the flame end optic. And then here uh, we have the, uh, the gra gravity, the position, the quantum gravity that puts everything at a certain position. You know, for the, the super pixel, for something to appear at a certain position, it defines this. So according to this, the Large Hadron Collider should find nothing, no Higgs boson. The, uh, the superpixel is the quantum gravity, according to the theory, but then it can be an appearance. The theory can still be an appearance. Now, there's the point, and there's the line, the first dimension. There's the second dimension. So, in this triangle, you know, with the transcendental numbers, the eye is seeing two dimensions. You know, the drawing on the screen is two dimensions. The video image is two dimensional. So the quantum level is two dimensional. That is the key to understanding the quantum level. This dimension, the third and the fourth, is the relativity, the three, four dimensions we've got. And in order to see four dimensions, we must be looking for a fifth dimension. If you can see one dimension, if you can see no a point, then you're on the line. You see a line, you're on a plane. If you can see a plane, you're in three dimensions. If you can see a space, then you're in four dimensions. If you can see four dimensions, you must be looking from fifth dimension, from here to fifth dimension. And then th these dimensions are internal. These are the contact senses, you know, of the, with the hand, with touch, with taste, touching the tongue, and the posture, you know, our sense of position in the position of our body. Okay, that, 
ですね。